at 10. Thanks for joining us on For Love or Money. This week at Chateau Yaldara, sparkling in the sun in possibly the best known of Australia's top wine areas, the lovely Barossa Valley in South Australia. Yaldara chairman H.M. Tum built this lovely chateau himself in the 40s and hasn't looked back since, with tour buses almost hourly bringing in wine and antique buffs to marvel at a quite marvellous collection of decorative arts. Now take a look at this. I really feel privileged just to be near this extraordinary piece of work which is steeped in the heavy drama of French history. It really is quite a story, and to tell it, Australia's leading antiques experts, Anna Clark and Peter Cook. Anna, it's a, an extraordinary piece, why is it unpainted, unglazed white? It's biscuit porcelain, Clive, and of course the French serve factory were perhaps the greatest exponents of biscuit porcelain. It's porcelain which is fired once, but not subsequently glazed and coloured. And, of course, it captures the essence of marble. It's sculptural porcelain. And here, of course, it's been reserved for a very, very august subject, um, a great poet and philosopher, Voltaire, 18th century poet and philosopher, being crowned here as father of the revolution by the French people. So it was a model which probably would have been created at Sèvres in the 1790s, but it went on being reproduced, um, partly because Voltaire really did become a great hero of the Enlightenment and of reason and of right. all liberty. So, so this is an allegory, Peter? Yes. Voltaire expressed the spirit of the 18th century. He was born in about 1694 and died in about 1778. He died before the revolution, but he had a a critical wit and a satirical way of expressing it in his writings and in his plays and he was imprisoned in the Bastille for offending one of the French princes because of his plays. He lived in Geneva for a while and he was expelled because he was doing the same thing there. He went to England for two years and loved it because he loved the freedom and the way the British went about things. He challenged authority, Clive. He wrote a very famous play called Brutus, which was revived in the 1790s. And in fact, in the 1790s, the French Revolutionary government brought back his remains to be buried at the Pantheon, or the Pantheon in, in Paris. Here, of course, you've got a, 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 quite a nice inscription, Sagesse et vertu ont ici le même prix qu'à Salancy. Wisdom and virtue have here the same price as in Salancy, which is a 17th century French play. I don't know the play in question um, very yeah. well, apart from knowing its name. So. Right. Well, there's a lovely piece of uh, Sèvres poetry. What's it worth? Peter? What do you think, Anna? Oh, well, I think people would pay a great deal for this. It's got a, a, a touch of the revolution about it. It's got a lot of history. Two or three thousand dollars? I think two or three thousand um, dollars would be uh, at auction, Clive, perhaps a bit more. Oh. Do you recognise this woman? Well, maybe not, I wouldn't blame you. But what about the phrase, let them eat cake? Yep. This is Marie Antoinette, the rather sad and the rather dim Queen of France, who when told the people were starving and couldn't buy bread, said, let them eat cake. Well, this is her husband, Louis XVI, who let her say it. And they've both been immortalised uh, in these plates in paintings. Now, why is this rather unfortunate royal couple, Anna? Why are they uh, immortalised? Well, the 19th century revived an interest in her, Clive. Remember, she was the queen married at 15 to the rather inadequate young Dauphin of France. And in 1789, she was taken from the Garden Hamlet, where, of course, she loved um, dressing up as a shepherdess. And she met her end in 1793 at the guillotine. Uh, she really, her, she had been fairly um, discredited um, before that time. And Rightly so, I think, because she was just living a lazy life of self-indulgence mm -hmm. and the revolution began two or three years before they were, or she was executed mm -hmm. and she was hated by the French people because of her sort of lack of understanding. Well, and, uh, and Peter, her, her husband, Louis the Sixteenth, they were a bit of a pair, weren't they? Yes, he was probably a decent fellow, but a bit inadequate, mm -hmm. yes. and, but she was sort of... Um, when the revolution was going on for a couple of years, they almost had a truce at one stage, and she spoiled that by uh, saying the wrong thing. If you'd had somebody with the character of Joan of Arc there, they might have hit it on the head. She was, uh, and a great interest was revived in her by the Empress Eugenie, and suddenly you find this, this interest coming back in Marie Antoinette. 
Um, remember, Eugenie was married to Napoleon Troyes around the 1860s. So a lot of these plates which depict Marie Antoinette will often date from the 1860s. Many of them, but not all of them, are French. Only some of them are from the Serve factory. And viewers may have sets which have on the back of them things like Chateau de Versailles or the Chateau de Fontainebleau. Yes, yes. This does not mean they're royal plates. Um, they were just uh, marks put on the back, uh, quite, often quite spuriously. These plates are nice quality, Peter, though, aren't they? Yes, um, good they're quality. heavy, surprisingly heavy. And probably um, worth about four or five hundred dollars each. Before we go, an antiques cleaning quick tip. Biscuit and parian ware can be washed if you use warm soapy water. If it's very dirty, use a mild abrasive. That's mild, remember. Applied with an artist's stencil brush, and then clean off with white spirit soaked cotton buds. Until next time, goodbye. You dribble whenever.